I'm a bit of a, a gyrovag. I was born in Massachusetts and grew up in Connecticut. And when I finished high school, my family moved to upstate New York, and I went to Indiana to study music. And then I joined the monastery in Indiana, and then I was sent over to Rome, and I've been in Italy for 25 years. The monastic life is very plain and ordinary. You get up and you pray, and you do your work, and you go to bed, and then the next day you do the same thing. Uh, so St. Benedict, in a certain sense, is, is the patron of the, of the ordinary, to find the, the presence of God in the ordinary. We have a very young community. The average age is about 33 or so. Uh, I'm the oldest. Uh, all the others are quite young. There are advantages to that. That is a certain vitality, youthful vitality. But we could use a few grandfathers, too, for some wisdom of age. A little bit more white hair might be uh, helpful. The uh, people of Norcia, before they even know who we were, they were so eager to have monks come back, they circulated a petition. We collected about uh, 4,000 signatures. That's quite a bit, seeing as there's only 5,000 people in the town. St. Benedict is the patron of this town, and uh, the monks have a symbolic value. It means for the townspeople that everything is going to be all right. I love music, and music for the monastic life is an essential part of our prayer. Uh, so chant is part, uh, part of uh, the air we breathe, um, and since we do it so often, It comes naturally after a few decades. The album is dedicated to chants uh, for Marian feast days, from the Divine Office and from some devotional music, uh, and not, not from the Mass. So it's, it's, we're happy to provide something that's unique. Music is, is central to our lives. It's, it's very important. We meet to sing seven, about eight times during the day. De Montfort Music approached us about the possibility of, of doing a CD with them. Um, I, I think they did so several years ago. In the past year or so, it seemed that we were at that point where we could actually do it. When the offer came to us again, we were very excited to take it. That's fine, good. Working with Christopher Alder and John Stokes has been a wonderful experience. It's certainly been a workout. Well, I've worked a lot with singers. Uh, Placido Domingo, I've made many recordings with lots of singers. Well, of course, the repertoire here is, is the chant. It's very much part of their lives. When they finish the recording session, they don't go back to their monastery and relax. They stay here and, and chant. The chant for them that we record um, means something to them, and you can hear that in, in the sincerity of their singing. And I notice that when I'm recording, it does have something in the best sense hypnotic or meditative. It, it has something eternal to it. One feels one is in touch with uh, the past. It, it, you don't feel it will ever go out of date. But it has something timeless. Well, because the monks have always chanted the psalms, that's the origin of, of, uh, of the musical expression of monastic life. Monasticism, it goes back a ways. Many people say it begins with Saint Anthony the Great, who was born in 250. Someone who is listening to this without any background will be drawn, I think, just by the beauty of it. The beauty and, I suppose, people might say it's somewhat ethereal, Gregorian chant, and they would connect it with some sort of spiritual experience. If you combine the music, the melodies, and the text, you have something that's quite extraordinary. Glory.